Hello everyone, it's GigaBeef here and today we're going to be looking at the SVD and the best builds to use including for Punisher Part 6. So to start with, the SVD has never been a low recoil weapon firing 7.62x54 which is one of the most powerful cartridges available to players in Tarkov. With 12.12 increasing recoil across the board, this has also hurt the SVD too and it wasn't in a great place to begin with. Most people encounter the SVD because of Punisher Part 6 which requires the use of this weapon to kill 15 PMCs. However, in 12.12 BSG changed this quest to prevent players from going to factory to complete it, presumably because it was too easy and not the experience that they wanted to give for the finale of the Punisher series. My map of choice was outside on shoreline because there were plenty of other players doing quests and avoiding resort including Punishers Part 1, 2 and 4 and given that I didn't want to be fighting in CQB with this absolute cannon of a weapon. This is because no matter what you do, the gun always seems to feel cumbersome and heavy, very different to the M4 that we talked about in the last video. Getting headshots feels, at least to me, so much harder after using it for this quest than with lighter weapons through a combination of low ergo, high weight and reduced arm stamina which comes from both. Given this, we'll be focusing on thorax hits primarily to take down our opponents, which means minimising the recoil of the weapon to be able to get off two quick shots in rapid succession is of the utmost importance. Why two? Well, this is because of the ammo. The choices are usually between PS, SNB or BT. The age old debate about PS versus SNB rages on as PS with its 86 damage technically one shots the 85 health pool thorax hitbox. However, have a look at this chart from TarkovBallistics.com, all the rounds are basically the same up to class 4, two shotting every opponent with every bullet. Then at class 5, the budget rounds LPS and T46M start to fall behind with 3 to 4 shot kills as you'd expect given they have 42 and 41 pen and PS is usually a 3 shot kill but can 2 shot with its 45 pen. SNB and BT are almost always a 2 shot kill, the same as BS, but BS is finding raid only so it isn't really a choice and is functionally equivalent to SNB. Then versus class 6, SNB and BT are normally 2 shot kills with SNB more likely and BT failing to do so around 20% of the time and 3 hitting instead as it has a 75% initial chance to pen versus the 92% chance of SNB. So what about PS? The vast majority of the time PS takes 4 hits to kill through class 6 due to the much lower penetration value that it has. You might be surprised to know that PS has a literal 0% pen chance versus a full durability class 6, so requires armour damage to be inflicted before it can kill. At 50% durability, it's still only a 26% pen chance. Running into class 6 is unlikely, but given all the rounds 2 shot otherwise, you may as well have SMB or BT. But I hear you say, I thought PS can one shot through armour lower than class 4, is it really a 2 hit always? The answer is nearly, but not quite. A useful tool that is slightly more flexible to allow us to answer this question is the Tarkov Changes website where very recently they have added a ballistics calculator that can generate a custom damage and pen drop off table. Using this and looking at the damage every meter out of the weapon, at 23 meters PS deals less than 85 damage. So this is why the table before had 2 hits on all the armour because it's calibrated at 25 meters. And yes, this does mean that you should be able to kill a naked PMC with PS rounds in one hit up to about 23 meters. However, against someone wearing armour, we haven't even thought about damage mitigation yet, which reduces the damage dealt by approximately 15-20% even on a penetration of a round, which is the reason class 4 stops PS from one tapping in general. Outside of about 20 meters, that doesn't even matter anymore due to the damage drop off itself, but whether PS can one tap players at point blank wearing class 2 or class 3, I'm actually not sure anymore, but honestly, it's a fringe case so it hardly matters. The final point that is critical are the recoil benefits. PS adds 8 recoil to the weapon and SNB adds 10. BT on the other hand removes 4 which is an overall swing of 12 recoil between PS and BT or 14 recoil from SNB to BT. This is actually a pretty big deal and given that BT is practically the same performance as SNB outside of rare unlucky encounters with class 6 armour, I think it's the way to go. Unfortunately you can only get BT at Prapple 4 after finishing Punisher 3 and SNB at Prapple 4 as well. However there is an easy craft for one red gunpowder for SNB and PS is available at Prepple 3. By the way, the frag chance on all these rounds is 8%, so 8% of the time you will one tap the enemy to the thorax on a penetration, which is maybe why people think that these rounds can in general. It's just that it doesn't matter which round you choose because it's the same likelihood for all of them. The only real downside is that BT is a tracer so could give you away but you're not spam firing on full auto with it and I haven't seen a problem using it even with the SVD on semi to be honest. A quick note on ranging and zero, the SVD is zeroed for PS rounds but PS, SMB and BT all have the same velocity of 875 meters so it works well for all of them. On to the builds, now that we know about the ammo and its two tap nature, the question is how to build the SVD itself. 
I tried to use some high ergo builds using the GL core stock and a few other neat mods, but the problem is that the SVD is just so heavy to begin with that the ADS speed always feels pretty rough, and the recoil disadvantage just doesn't offset the poor performance. Part of this is that to get a decent ergonomics you have to forgo the suppressor, which is where a bulk of the recoil reduction comes from in the first place. It would be cool if there were some other alternatives to mod the SVD loud, but given that this isn't the case, the suppressor build it is. There are two ways to go with the SVD. Starting with the lower, the standard SVD that you get from the Flea or Prapor is the lower band version that takes the standard barrel and gas block. The difference here is the short handguards, of which you have the default, the budget mod one in the XRS that lets you use a foregrip, or the modernization kit. This only fits with the standard cover and is one starting point for the build. The lowest recoil in this configuration is adding the RK2, any pistol grip, the stock adapter, the Mesa tactical buffer, and the PRS Gen 3 stock. Then we add the SVDS compensator, the Rotor 43 thread adapter, and the Rotor 43 suppressor. Finally, one extra part that's compatible with this version is the SVD modernization kit top rail, which takes our recoil down to 82, with an ergonomics of, yeah, it's 2. Okay, fine, if you really want to be silly about getting the lowest recoil number, you can actually use the night vision scope, which takes it down to 71, but don't do this. Going the other way on the build, using all the same barrel and suppressor stuff, we can use the SAG Mark 1 handguard, which requires the short, custom dust cover instead. Adding the RK2, a grip, the same stock combo gets us to 7 ergo and 92 recoil, 10 more recoil for 5 more ergo. Personally, I prefer recoil here, and I don't think 5 ergonomics is worth 10 recoil in general, so we'll be using the lower band version of the weapon. We can make some amendments here so that it's not so crazy on full meta parts, starting with the foregrip. As usual, the RK2 is the most reducing in the game at 4%, but its negative ergo really hurts most weapons. Because this handguard is M-Lock compatible, rather than using the RVG that we normally use for budget, we can get an M-Lock AFG that fits natively and gives the same stats. Next on the stock, again the Mesa is good for recoil with minus 5%, but you have to complete Terror Group Employee from Peacekeeper which is a very high level quest and comes after samples as well as giving a minus 3 ergo as well. The advanced tube at minus 4% recoil and plus 2 ergonomics is mechanic 4, which we probably don't have either, but if you do, you can use it. However, at mechanic 3, the HK advanced tube, which is a straight minus 3% recoil, is the next best choice available that is accessible. From here, we'll replace the PRS with the MOE stock and pad as usual, which gets to 27 ergo and 99 recoil. On the pistol grips, I usually use the saw grip, which is one less ergonomics for a minor decrease in cost than the US palm, but you can keep the palm if you want. For magazines, there are only two available and the 20 rounders are available on Prap or 4, which you should use if you can as they are only minus 2 ergo versus the minus 1 of the 10s. If you can't buy them yet, the 10s will do just fine with a bit of care, and the 20s on the flea are usually around 25,000 or more, which might be worth it to you to get a single one loaded into the gun, paired with two 10s in the rig, but in my opinion is too much money. This then takes us to 24 ergonomics and 99 recoil. With the bulk of the build complete, we now just have to decide on the optics and tacticals. I went through a few iterations here as I was completing the quest, and found close range fights with the laser really tough, so I ended up settling on the canted mount using a delta point as my favourite compact sight. This is pretty unusual for me, as I don't generally run canted on any of my guns, but it worked out quite nicely and ended up coming in clutch for my final kill of the quest. In terms of a main optic, I'm still rocking the TAC-30 in the 30mm rings, and instead of the canted you could potentially get a different scope mount with a dot attachment instead in theory. However, in this setup we finalise at 19 ergo and 99 recoil. For me, this was the best balance of price, recoil and usability in all situations, and after a seriously rough start carried me through Punisher 6 to completion. Coming up next, I'm putting together a full video of all the kills from Punisher 6 this wipe, which will be releasing in a few days after this one, so be sure to check out how I managed to complete Punisher 6 across 7 successful raids. Let's just ignore the ones where I died without any kills, eh? So as usual, if you learned something, please consider dropping a like and a comment. To see when I'm streaming, you can follow me on Twitter and Twitch. Check out our Scab Talk podcast in the links below, and with all that said, I'll see you next time, and as always, have fun in your raids.